Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Upon many, many, many requests and questions from you guys, I finally decided to make this video. I don't think a video like this exists out there, so I decided to just give you guys all the information you need. As somebody who's been living in Istanbul and Turkey for the past eight years, I have been living here as a student, I'm currently working, and also my family lives here with me. So I kind of have a perspective on to different, you know, experiences of, you know, living in Istanbul. So. I decided to share my experiences with you guys and give you guys the real information that you would need in order to live here. A lot of people have been asking me before obviously they make a big change and move to the city about the prices or um, what kind of places can they rent or buy, or where should they do that, with who should they do that, da 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 da. The list goes on and on and on. So that's why I made a whole list for you guys to just start off and give you guys everything you need. First information I'm gonna give you is Istanbul is a very, a very, very, very big city, okay? So um, the population here is exceeding 20 million during certain times of the year. In summer especially, the population goes up to 22 million and whatnot, and it is extremely crowded. The central part of Istanbul, which you can see right here on this map, is the most crowded. So now I wanna get into the first part of which regions in Istanbul are the best places to live in. As you have guessed, in any part of the world, in any big city, central parts usually tend to be a lot more expensive than the outskirts of the city. So the central parts are usually starting from Sultanahmet area, which is Fatih, and then there is the Taksim area, which is like the whole Shishli region, Beşiktaş region, then there's Kadıköy, Üsküdar, and then there's Beykoz, and then there's Bebek. Now, I will give you the difference between living on the Asian side and the European side. Now, starting off with the Asian side. So now the Asian side is relatively more affordable than the European side. So, starting with Üsküdar. Üsküdar is a very nice region to live in for families, for students and whatnot. Um, it's a little bit of a conservative type of district. Uh, so, there's a lot of mosques, really, really amazing places to see. It's a very calm, very safe neighborhood to live in. And I've lived there myself before when I was studying in university and I absolutely loved it. So, Kadıköy is a very huge district okay it's a very huge area so the central most the most central part of Kadıköy is the most artsy the most liberal the most open uh, in terms of mentality uh, type of place so a lot of students and young people who like young professionals they choose to live on the central side and it's a very very nice place for a lot of people to meet up and for a lot of activities and events to happen so that's basically what it is. It's really really nice and it is very accessible to like by all transportation passes by Kadiko. It is very very accessible so it's amazing. I also lived there a few months ago and it was amazing. And then there's Umrania, extremely crowded. That's just what I really don't like about it. Compared to Üsküdar and Kadiko, I think if you combine those two, you will come up with Umrania. The people that live in Umrania, there's just there's they multiply. Every single time I go there, it just gets more crowded. So it's a very busy, very crowded, very um, stuffy area. So there's a lot of traffic there. And now that there's a metro, it's a lot more accessible to people. Um, so the prices there are also very affordable. So much more affordable than compared to Kadikari and Uskudar. So a lot of people also choose to live in Umrania. And it has amazing views. And you know, there is gentrification going on there, so there's a lot more new buildings, new malls and new roads being built all the time. Now, I'm gonna get into the list of a lot more expensive or high-end areas that you can choose to live in the Asian side. There are a lot more modern, civil, really, really well-designed, really beautiful and it's just pleasurable to live in. And these places are just really beautiful. I'm just gonna give you guys the list. They're called the Atashehir. Atashehir is an area that has a lot of high-rise buildings. It's very modern, it's very beautiful, it has a lot of malls. It's just gorgeous. I love it. There's Moda, it's a little neighborhood within Kadikoy, and it is just so high-end, literally so high-end because it has an amazing view of the Bosphorus. And then there's Bostanji area, a lot of new buildings being built along the sea line. It's also a really um, popular choice to a lot of 
families that want to live in a really nice building with a really nice view. Baudot Jadisi is one of the busiest streets in Istanbul. It is gorgeous, there's a lot of brands, like really high-end brands that have shops there and literally every business owner would dream to open up a shop in Baudot Jadisi because it's literally so long, it stretches so long and it's so busy, it's always packed with people. It's the best place to be living in because you have access to a lot of shops and transportation. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the European side. So European side is generally more expensive than the Asian side, I already covered this. Now, but obviously this is just a really general statement when it does vary from one region to another. And with starting off with the most popular region in the European side is Beşiktaş. It's a huge area, but it's also really, really busy in all parts. So Beşiktaş, Ortaköy, Levant, Bebek, Arnavutköy, Ayaza, and Nishantashi areas that are a lot more expensive compared to other parts of European side. So they're really expensive and because first of all it's the European side, second of all it, they're all really well connected and thirdly because they're all really extremely crowded. And then anyway, I'm gonna get into the European side but less expensive and more affordable and reasonable priced areas are Tophane, Jihangir, Shishli, Osman Bey and Mejdeker. So these are the areas that are a lot more down to earth and they are reasonable. You can find really nice places to live in there as well. Old buildings, new buildings, whatever. You can find really nice neighborhood. Those are the areas that are like mostly chosen by students. A lot of students tend to choose these areas to live in because they're a lot more affordable and really, really well connected and in the European side. Other areas in the European side include Fatih, which is a really um, crowded area as well. It's also a little conservative in terms of like the there's like this whole culture and history in the area so it's traditionally conservative, religiously conservative and a lot of foreigners living in that area as well. Majority of the foreigners are Arabs that live in Fatih and uh, there's a lot of affordable places to live in Fatih, really really affordable places and but mostly it is a family oriented neighborhood. So it is safe, it's really beautiful, it's really nice, but it's mostly for families as I know it. And then there is a metro bus, is a metro bus. It has its own line and stretches really deep into the European side. And there's neighborhoods along that. They're not exactly considered central Istanbul, but as far away as you get from the center, the less expensive anything and everything gets. Second part of this video. How do I find these places? How do I find myself? A place to live in, sahibinden.com. And the good part is, is that it's both in Turkish and in English, so you can find all the information in English there. And then there are certain other pages that you can look into that are, I think, a lot more closer in terms of like getting to know the people you're going to be living in. So on Facebook, there are certain pages that are for, you know, sharing rooms, flats, apartments with people. Some of them, I list them right here. Those are, I'm even part of these groups. And then there's a third option of finding a really decent house to live in is hiring an agent. And an agent is basically called an emlakçı in Turkey. But the only downside is you're gonna have to pay a certain commission. So now let's talk money. To find a house on average from 1,500 to 2,200 is very normal. So this, the range of price is very normal anywhere because if you really do look for a decent house you can find a really nice house a really nice apartment for rent within the range of 1500 to 2200 not even 2500 because even that is a lot that's too expensive it obviously does depend from how many rooms that the house comes with and how new the building is um, the place that you're going to be getting this house, you know, renting this house, play a big role in its finance and its cost. And the other factor that, that makes a big difference in the cost of a house is accessibility. If it's close to a big transportation line such as a metro um, or a metro bus. So the final section of this video, let's talk truth. Do not get an empty apartment if you are not willing to buy furniture. You need to get a fully furnished house if you do not want to spend money on furniture. Watch out to the difference between a combi, a house that has a combi, and then there's central heating. Central heating means that the entire building has one heater 
and when you turn that heater on, it heats up all of the apartments in the building. Combi is the heater inside one house. So when you turn it on, only your house is gonna get heated. So you're gonna have control of whether you turn off the combi or you turn it on and how much you turn it on. So that's up to you and then you pay the amount that you use. Whereas in central heating, the entire building is being heated and there's a certain temperature in which the central heating is set on and all of the apartment is gonna have to share the prices of this. So that is going to be a lot more expensive, especially if you don't necessarily feel cold during the winter and you feel like your house is fine but because the entire building is using heat a lot of heat you're gonna have to share the costs and you would not want to do that number three see the house that you're gonna be getting or renting or buying you have to go see it if you do not see it uh you're gonna be disappointed go to the house observe it investigate it see what's wrong with it See if everything works before you get it. This is a very important note, and this is the best advice I can give you. Do not pay your rent in cash. You should be paying by bank. The person who's renting you the house is supposed to provide you with the bank information to which you can send the rent money every month, right? This is the legal way. So if you are paying in cash, you're doing something illegal, and obviously the owner of the house or whoever you're paying the money to is exploiting you and they're doing something illegal. When you first rent a house, the first three payments that you are gonna make are the first month's rent, the second thing is the deposit fee, usually it's the same amount as the first month's rent, and thirdly is the commission to the agency, the office that found you the house. And another really important rule is sign a contract. If you do not sign a contract, you may get an a big problem, a big mess. So another thing that a lot of owners of the houses tend to really just complain about is um, things that are broken in the house. So a lot of the things that are broken usually tend to be involving water or electricity or gas or like the walls. Something's really like majorly broken in the house. It is not up to you to fix unless you broke it unless you physically broke it after you moved in, it is not your job to fix. So you do not pay the fee of those broken things. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys want such informative videos in the future, do let me know, I will make them. And I'll see you guys in my future videos. Bye!